Okay. Yeah. So um, I just we 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 talked we chatted off air a little bit about what's happening in Berlin and Germany, and um, it looks like you're you're getting your studio rewired, or you're trying to set up. What's what's happening? Yeah, I'm missing. I'm. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, the furniture arrived, uh, but they, they forgot the single part, so I can't set up. So I'm waiting for the final parts to uh, set up. And uh, yeah, once, as you can see, like some of the racks are already there. Um, the others, yeah, I have to wait for another week, I guess. Uh, it's a bit difficult, everything with the delivery uh, during the lockdown everywhere. Uh, all parcels are like having huge packages all the time, like for everyone's ordering from home because all the shops are closed. Yeah. So yeah, but apart from this, it's all good. Good. Um, you have a long career in, in the, the electronic music world. I mean, I think I read that you started your career back in the early 90s. So tell us what was happening at the time and, you know, why move in that direction in the early 90s? Um, well, I, I started going to uh, house and techno clubs in the late 80s, um, discovered like the, the acid house and early house and techno from Detroit, Chicago, New York, anywhere. Uh, and uh, uh, originally started buying records at the time after the first visit at the club and uh, then um, kept on trying mixing at home. I bought a second pair of turntables uh, and uh, a mixer. And uh, yeah, and then it took another three years for me to to finally play in clubs. All my friends were telling me that I should uh, I should uh, play and uh, I was making tapes for them. And but I, I didn't really want it to change sides, uh, which finally in 91, I was like, maybe I should give it a go. And then I started DJing and uh, it was a it was a great time back then because um, the scene was very small. So everyone knew everyone, even though they were like from like a different music uh, parts. Like I even knew all the trans guys back then because it was just a few of us. And uh, yeah, it was it was a quite uh, funny time. So many creative people being in this kind of music and uh, it's been still a very small scene. As I said, and uh, I remember playing the first tapes to my friends and some of my friends were mentioning that it's not even music and why I'm listening to this and stuff. <laughs> that was the early 90s, I guess, right? Or mid 90s, maybe? Yeah, late 80s, yeah. early 90s. Everyone was like, what is this, you know? And then, and then the scene grew and grew and grew and uh, into something that we know all today, which is kind of, I think, part of the pop culture. I wouldn't call it any anything else than that now. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think we can use the term underground anymore. <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely not. Um, but you, I mean, there's there's parts of it that that I would still like um, say it's kind of it has the underground vibe and uh, and and the way it sounds and and also the the uh, the people it attracts. But it's just it's just such a short, small part, and it's uh, overseen by all the all the noise made by all the others, you know? And uh, it's a bit of a shame because I think there has to be a separation at one point where like the, the underground-ish stuff is getting its own platform away from, from all the, 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 the big noise makers, you know? Yeah, uh, you're known to be, I guess, um, quite diverse in your sound um, and you've, you've evolved and uh, over over time, I mean, how, what what motivates you, or what keeps you sort of on that cutting edge? Uh, well, I mean, it's it's always difficult to say. Uh, I mean, uh, firstly, I think uh, for everyone who starts, is is more like maybe you're attracted more by you know the obvious stuff, and then the more you dig into it, and also the more confident you become about like your own productions, the more you get into more um, details and more, maybe more um, sophisticated uh, stuff. Uh, and uh, also with all the change happening over the years, you're trying out going this direction, going that direction. And then at one point you, you're becoming uh, um, quite clear about your own vision and where you want to go and where you where you want to be placed in, instead of you know like following any trends or, or or stuff like that. Yeah, no, excellent. We love your stuff. Um, you've played around the world at different events and parties. Um, obviously, over the last year or so, that that's that has stopped. Um, yeah. 
and you know, I, I got to ask you a COVID question, even though we're sick of it, but I'll ask you a COVID question around uh, yeah. what, what have what have you learned over the last year about yourself or about you know your music? Um, well, firstly, in the beginning, when I the time I wrote the album, I mean, I, I finally, after all the years of heavy touring schedules, yeah. uh, finally had the time to really spend uh, some ex extensive time in the studio and uh, extended time in the studio and uh, uh, so I didn't have to leave for a weekend trip or for like a two weeks trip and I could really concentrate on on writing music and also could dive deeper into soundscapes that I haven't been able to before because it was all about like just uh, trying to find the next record for the DJs to play out and uh, even though for the albums I always try to get a bit more open but it was very difficult between <clears throat> between all the gigs to like really shut off the 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 clubbing thing and and then write some something uh, different and uh, yeah so so that really helped in the beginning to create the album and to uh, to go deeper into into uh, other kind of uh, music that I always loved and uh, but I never really had the time to explore and ex ex uh, uh, express. And uh, yeah, then the album was finished and then, you know, getting deeper into, into the, the lockdown and not being able to travel. And uh, then you start to think about this yourself, the world and, and, uh, and uh, yeah, I think what I personally learned is um, that I don't need much to be happy. And uh, I, love, I love touring, I love being a DJ, but uh, I can survive without, um, which before I, I didn't know if I ever be able to, to quit, you know, at one point, if I ever want to retire or something, you, you know, like it's everyone who started is almost still in there. Like it's at least if they still have a, a reliable place in, in the scene and they, so they keep on doing what they're doing. And uh, so maybe I, I will do it forever, but um I know now that that uh, I will find other other ways to express myself and maybe be more in the studio and uh, and maybe also do some other creative stuff uh, that that I also found out during these these times that I that I um, yeah that I can ex express my uh, my emotions or whatever you want to call it also in other uh, in photography or in you know like doing some weird collages or something like that uh, so that was also very uh, very nice to to see because I, I for a long time I thought music was my only channel yeah it's amazing the resilience that we have as humans and also what 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 I've learned is that you know we, we can be creatures of habit yeah, um, and totally. I, I think, totally. yeah and, and i think you know it's 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 like uh, you have this lifestyle and you think you know you think you're happy in it because you know you maybe convince yourself that you are um yeah and, you, and we all get tunnel vision i think i didn't realize what i've learned is i didn't realize i thought i was a very open thinker and i realized i actually had a lot of tunnel vision about my life and, yeah. and just being this rigid structure and routine all the time and when that stopped um with music also and djing and some other things in my life um, I felt there was a bit of a void for a while. I think I was really depressed, and then I became really happy because I felt like a renewal and opportunity, actually. Yeah. Uh, and it sounds like you, you know you're finding that too. That sometimes in crisis, there's there's actually a positive silver lining around renewal and opportunity, and 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 you know really thinking outside of the box and and, and doing something different. So that, that sounds great. Um, in 1999, you um, launched Poker Flat Recordings, and um, yeah huge success little label in fact i think you have a great gal from toronto on, on that label yeah. um uh tell us about that and and what's been the the formula because you know we see labels come and go all the time but poker fly has has remained strong and and, and especially during the pandemic um you know I, I get your your newsletters and stuff but tremendous releases happening like huge um tell us yeah. about that. uh well i i for um for a long time, uh, in the beginning, for a long time, I was just working mostly with friends that I, with people I already knew, and uh, and we try to build something together, or I, I was trying to build something with them, or you know, like for us, um, and um, and then 
over the years, more and more uh, demos got sent to us. And um, yeah, I, I spoke with, I met more and more people and I spoke with them if they ever want to send some demos. And uh, um, I think the peak for the label was definitely the Trent Muller album, um, which was like so successful. We haven't even like I think we still haven't realized like what happened back then. It it was just it was just insane, and uh, we would have never expect something like this from a small independent label, you know. Um, but so um, and then after that, with all the uh, uh, with all the, the 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 hype at the time, then we were going through a different phase, a difficult phase where um, I also. I, I at this point I, I was touring on an even heavier schedule and uh, I was playing so many huge events and uh, I kind of felt like in most of these um, I can't really connect with the crowd anymore and I wanted to I want I was looking for something more real let's say it like this so I was I was uh, signing some music that would sound more deeper or you know like more I don't know how to describe but like not, not so obvious in a way and uh, so then we had like a little dip but I think going through this that finally people realized that uh, that we're still there and we, we like um, have a strong um, uh, reputation for releasing timeless music without you know like following the trends and and uh, we've been the trendsetter for a while, and then we had to we had to get out of it because everyone was getting to the same sound. So I I, I was trying to get away from it, and and it it, it worked. And uh, then over the past few years, it's just uh, it's just been very um, very nice that we got sent so many nice demos from people I would never even thought of asking. And uh, it, yeah, the past few years uh, have been very great and. Uh, and uh, through the pandemic, uh, in the beginning, we had a lot of releases already there that had to be released. And we, we talked about, shall we hold this for a while and blah, blah, what shall we do? But then it was also that we realized that um, people are gonna need music no matter what, you know? It's, yeah. there's no clubs, uh, there's, there's a few people do, oh, at the beginning, there were a lot of people doing streamings, but it's not like the, the music, maybe it's never gonna play it in clubs, but at least it's, it's, we decided to keep on releasing music. And I spoke to many of the artists uh, saying like, look, I think, you know, it's important to be around at this time. You are gonna write so much music anyways. And you, if you release everything after it's finished, then you have like a full year of tracks and probably uh, three times the amount that you usually have per year. So if not more, um, so we should just keep on releasing, you know, and uh, that that uh, everyone agreed on. And I think that that helped to uh, and also I think the extra time that all the artists had to create like music that helped like to uh, have uh, such amazing releases, uh, even yeah. during the pandemic. Yeah, there's been tremendous releases over the last year. And, and what I've noticed uh, that the music's evolved, actually, in a lot of ways. Um, there's a lot more uh, collaborations happening between artists because uh, I guess yeah. time to do that. And, and, the, and the music feels richer. It feels like there's more time spent. Um, and, yeah. and for a lot of DJs, as you said, they're traveling quite a bit. So it's difficult to do both, you know, uh, have your focus on both very well. So very, very yeah. exciting times. Um, yeah. Moving forward for you as, as, as a DJ, as a producer, a label owner, all these kind of things. Um, what I mean, are you the type of person that sets future goals or is it more spontaneous? What, what, what type of thinker are you? Um... Yeah, I, I, this is another thing I've been thinking about a lot uh, during this uh, extra time. That that when I started all this, uh, getting into music and and um, my goal was more like to have a record out that that my favorite DJs will play, or that I would want to play in some of these clubs that I always loved and or heard of, and and that already happened uh, many years back, and then. And then uh, you're just into the kind of the trap mill, as you said before, it's just like, you know, it keeps on going and going and going and you don't really have the time to think about it. You're just like, wow, this is an amazing ride, like on a roller coaster, ups and downs and nice, you know, and, but you're like, wow, this is amazing. And then, 
and then uh, yeah, suddenly it stops, and then you're like, wait, wait a minute, why am I still doing this? And and uh, do I st- really want to still do this? And blah blah blah. So you you question everything again, and um, yeah, so uh, I uh, I realized that that uh, that that it's definitely something. I will, I will, even if I would have to do a job, I would still do it as a hobby uh, to, if it's not like, and this is what got me into it in the first place, that, that I love making music so much uh, and I don't need really to have a goal. I just, I, I mean, my goal now I think is to keep on writing amazing music and trying, I, I'm, I'm having some visions or some ideas that I hope that I can, I can realize and uh, uh, and go even deeper into certain areas uh, and uh, maybe start with another um, project on a new project name mm-hmm. and uh, uh, do some other stuff that I'm, I, I, w- I wasn't doing before or just slightly partly or something like this and uh, yeah I think I think it would be it would be um, it would be great to um, to amaze people again with you know like with stuff because when you're around for so many years and the, the expectations it's always and kind of it's really hard to like renew yourself because like it's you and you had all the history and it's hard to to shut off all the what you learned over the years and uh but in a way i think it's 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 uh important to kind of reach to the next uh step and uh and uh, hopefully people are gonna like it. And I, I think that's that's uh, my my main goal now to come up with something where people will be like, wow, we ha- haven't expected this, you know, like, yeah. so that that's, uh, and then obviously going back to clubs and still being a part of it because you never know, it's, it's a fast business. And, uh, and I think all this, uh, this lockdown will have, uh, 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 effects on what's coming afterwards. Uh, many clubs had to close. Uh, promoters may decide for other reasons than before. Uh, are they going for the big names only? Are they going for for only the new underground or whatever you want to call it? Or like you know, it's 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 hard to say at this point. It's because the, it's like a complete stop. So. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people I've been talking to over the last year, I mean, I think one thing, at least initially when this is over, that there'll be a lot, a lot of emphasis on a localized kind of scene, yeah, uh, or, or regional scene. Um, and, and that's how things started, really. I mean, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. And there's some excitement in that, I think, in, in a lot of ways. No, totally. Uh, it, you know, it also, it's, it's, sorry, it's, it's also for the crowd, I think. It, yeah. it, it, this is something that is, has been totally forgotten that like you know the the local dj who knows his crowd and who plays week by week the same club for the same crowd like they they had the chance to create hits their own hits you know like when when, when a traveling dj when you're a traveling dj it's so hard to read the crowd i mean this is something you learn over the years or you have it or you don't but but it's still it's something else that if you really know like if you're going to put on this record and only you play this record in this club like for many weeks and you know if you put down this record the club's gonna go nuts and you and it's really hard over the years that now especially with so much music out there even to find a track that the people know uh, unless you play like the big hits but the, i mean you know so it, it's the to to have this reaction or the the the, the um the connection with the crowd knowing each other i think this is something that is great to have back. And I, I think, um, I forgot to say this before, um, I, I was running my my uh, own party series called Steve Buck Presents Play here in Berlin since three years. Uh, I only did a few events every summer because it was an outdoor location. And, uh, but this is something I'm really, um, I'm really focusing also on bringing back uh, once once it's it's gonna be back. Because I also think it's gonna be less uh, guest DJs probably and and uh, and more locals. And uh, I always supported you know people from Berlin and I had a few guests. Uh, um, but yeah, I think this is something that really has to be pushed by everybody. And and uh, uh, yeah, also also it would save a lot of. Um, 
a lot of the environment if we're not flying like crazy around the globe every weekend i mean it's uh yeah. the other part of it yeah well well and you know i think what we've learned too that i mean some of the streaming events have been quite good some have been not so good but but i but i think you know you could do your party in berlin and then stream it to the world but still a local event right yeah yeah like, there's all kinds of creative ways now with, with video technology and how do you use how do you hybrid a live event and then broadcast that to the world you know and and almost like you're bringing berlin into toronto and you're, you're watching exactly it and that, exactly know? because that's going to look different the one thing i don't really like about like um the streaming is, is that usually you have the dj and maybe the friend of the dj standing there and doing like <laughs> and and you know and then you have the palm tree and then yeah, yeah. you know it's some of it it looks good but it also depends on the dj i i personally i'm very very physical person i like to move around when i'm playing uh, but then some djs you have there standing like they're only moving their hands and i'm like who's looking at this you know like who's looking at the stream but once once you add the crowd and then you know it's yeah. it's gonna be a completely different thing and and then it's it, that's like what the boiler room like was bringing yeah. in you know like having the people behind and blah 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 but you could now with the camera sizes you can bring smaller cameras and maybe yeah. you don't stream live because then you can still cut it together afterwards and you make yeah. sure that all the recording is there and you know because sometimes the live streaming uh, is a bit different uh, difficult because of all the uh, uh and, network yeah. and stuff yeah exactly yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, there's some possibility there i mean one of the things i don't like about live streaming is if, if the visuals or the, the effects are not not complementary to the music and the theme uh, yeah. there's very often a mismatch between that with live streams <laughs> and, but, yeah, totally. but, but also yeah. i think i don't even hear the music that i just see the visual which kills the music right so yeah. so i think like you said having a camera on me as a dj for you know three hours is boring but is there any kind of almost like you're doing your own video production so like yeah. it's going to the theme of the music yeah uh, i think dance music is different especially electronic music because when i'm on the dance floor as a dancer I make my own interpretation of what the visual is going to be in my head. And that's the beauty of it. Right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Like it can be anything. And it's like, once a visual is there, I'm already now being conditioned to see you know, to understand what the music is about, which I don't like. So I have my, my ups and downs around, around streaming. Um, I think, I, I don't think it's been perfected yet in terms of a, a more of a connection to the music, promoting the music, not the DJ. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, that that's probably a, a general problem that that the scene that the scene had uh, or has over the the the, the past uh, decades. That like the focus is way too much on the on the DJ. When I started playing or when I started going out in the first the, the first club I, I went to, like uh, they they had the DJ behind the dark darkened glass. So you could only see like the shape and you couldn't you couldn't see his face or people weren't facing the dj they were facing you know each other on the dance floor it was like a big uh togetherness and and or maybe you have your eyes closed and just you know and also again uh that's something else like if you have a um if you have the have a resident dj and you have like a, a good light guy who knows the music he can add so much just by a very little lightning yeah. uh, you don't need a super expensive beamers and stuff like this just very simple lights will do if you have someone who knows the tracks and who knows how to work the lights and uh that's the same uh but different with, with the streaming services i think uh you have to add this this something that you know like bring something to the music maybe in best case uh uh, and not like uh, takes anything from the music and also that people shouldn't you know like always face the DJ it's just if you look at especially the big events if you you, you see this dance floors of like five ten thousand people everyone's uh, facing the DJ and it's no one really dancing it kind of looks like you know they're just doing a fist pump for like a few <laughs> seconds and then they wait for the next build up and it's just I don't know. It's it's, it's a bit strange, uh, and it, it works if if it's a band. But even for a lot of bands, you have people freaking out more than than these yeah. people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's something that would be great to see uh, a part of the past and not a part of the future. <laughs> yeah. 
Steve, don't, thank you so much for spending time with us today and, and good luck with your music and, and your career. And uh, we're really excited to continue to push your, 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 the label and you and, and everything else related and stay safe during this time period. Thank you so much. You too. You too. It's been a pleasure to be a part of the show.